Did you know? Hypanthistrus zebra pleco is a very beautiful pleco variety and is much more hard to breed compared to other species. Most of the time, people end up with failed attempts due to lack of knowledge about making a good setup, selecting healthy specimens for the aquarium, maintaining the good health of fish and water column, and due to the unique set of behaviors of L46 zebra plecos. After this video, you will be a master of making a good and healthy colony of zebra pleco. Here we are talking about making a biotope aquarium, selecting possible males and females, selecting genetically and morphologically possible healthy fish, maintaining standard levels of water chemistry, feeding, and how to trigger them to spawn. First, we will roll on our intro. The L046 Hypancistrus zebra is a species of small pleco, which are very popular in the aquarium hobby. This amazing species originates from the Xingu River Basin, Brazil in South America. The water chemistry of the Rio Xingu is well documented, but it is not that important as Hypancistrus zebra seems to do well in just about any water provided it is high in oxygen content, clean and warm. pH and GH do not seem to matter, since the fish has been spawned in all types of water, even water that was hard and alkaline. To best replicate their natural habitat, the water would be neutral to slightly acidic and soft. Unlike the popular opinion regarding many other loricariids, Zebra Pleco is more of a carnivore than an algae eater. This is backed up by a small and lightly toothed mouth that indicates it is a poor algae eater. Provide mainly meaty foods such as bloodworm and even brine shrimp, now we will talk about the basic facts regarding the Zebra Pleco biotope. The Rio Xingu is full of rocks of many sizes, with some fine sand between them. Zebra Pleco is collected in deeper mid-water channels where it hides in caves. The ideal Zebra Pleco tank would be set up much differently than what we picture as a typical South American biotope. The tank should resemble a rocky riffle area in a stream with jumbles of rounded rocks and good water movement should provide lots of small caves as the fish normally live and spawn in the caves and cracks of rocks. The rocks should be assembled haphazardly to create lots of crevices and shelves in which the fish can cram themselves. Sand is preferable, but large rounded gravel or bare bottom tanks are also accepted. Preferably dark rock and bogwood, but we can also provide some driftwood. In my tank setup, I use active aquarium soil with a two inch thick layer from the bottom of the tank. It keeps pH low level, and for further, I use some plants to maintain the natural cycling process of nitrogen in the tank. Also, I use non-active cream color natural stone plates to increase the horizontal surface area, and it also creates many shades for the fish. I also use driftwood. It creates tannins and gives food to small zebra plecos which will help to maintain healthy bowel movements of the small fish and prevent gastrointestinal problems. As a filter method, I use a sponge filter with a high flow air pump. Also, I use dry and well-seasoned Terminalia catapa leaves to maintain a low pH value and also give biofoods for small zebra plecos and improve the water quality. In my zebra pleco tank, I keep the water temperature at 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. When you choose tank mates for zebra pleco, choose wisely as zebras do not compete well for food with particularly fast or aggressive tank mates. In my setup, they are living with galaxy rasbora and cherry shrimp. Shrimps are very helpful to reduce the waste products in the tank. They will eat all the leftover food particles by zebra plecos. Because of this, the system will not go to ammonia spikes due to leftover foods and waste products. Shrimps can reach small spaces that zebra plecos are unable to go and eat all left food in those areas. These tips will help to maintain a healthy zebra pleco tank with balanced water chemistry. All I explained above will be somewhat important for the balance of a tank as a unit. Now I will tell you why you should not invest in adult zebra plecos. I will try to explain the important steps so that you do not make mistakes and have an easier process. I am not an expert, but I have already traveled some way down the Zebra Pleco Avenue, and I will talk about my experience and the good advice that some experts have given me. When you plan to raise Zebra Pleco, one thing to keep in mind is not to try to skip three years of time or more and buy an adult pair. Usually nobody sells a well-functioning adult couple. 
Whoever sells an adult pair is usually because the plecos are too old and does not lay eggs or lays a little amount of eggs. Or the male is eating the eggs as a habit. Don't fall into that mistake and you will lose a great amount of money without gaining anything. Also, when you take adults, you will lose the knowledge about the growth pattern and unique set of behaviors of this amazing fish as they mature to an adult. When you take a small fish colony, you will come across much more difficult situations till they mature. Without that knowledge, it is a risk to maintain an adult zebra pleco colony. The number one key to raising zebra pleco is patience. Now we will look at how to select healthy, best quality zebra plecos and possible sex interpretation of them. From the moment you bring home your group of small fish until you have your first spawn, about two to three years will pass on average. At that time, they will be at the size of about three to 3.5 inches in length. Take at least 10 to 12 small specimens from different bloodlines as much as possible for healthy spawns. Otherwise, you will miss the bus at the end of three years due to crossbreeding between the fish of the same bloodline. They will have deformities and a smaller number of healthy fries. There are important things to consider when you select the fish for your colony. I will explain the features that you should look for when selecting a possibly healthy fish, one by one. Keep in mind all these are interpretations. When you select a fish, keep in mind to select from the same batch to get an idea about possible males and females. Most of the time in the same batch males are larger than females, but it is not 100% accurate, but it increased the possibility of having males and females. Choose one largest and one smallest. Notice that the fish have a rather long nose. A healthy zebra has a bluish tint in his eyes and caudal, dorsal and tail fins. Then you look for any deformities of body shape, fins and eyes. Never select the fish that have deformities. Then look into tail fin lobes. Edges of the tail fins should be tapered well and must have lobes. Also, the tail has a pronounced V shape. Most of the time when young fish get infected with some kind of skin infection, the fin ends get damaged. And when they recover from the disease, it will heal without any tapering and lobes. Then the tail end gets a more rounded shape. Do not select that kind of fish for your colony. I will put a good example from one of my zebra pleco colonies. That fish got white spot disease and damaged all fin endings. Then he recovered with rounded tail ends without lobes. In this part, you can clearly see how his tail endings are healed with rounded tail tips. Look at the fish's tummy. It should be round, showing that the fish is eating well and doesn't have any internal parasites or malnutrition part. When looking at the fish from above, you'll see that all the fins are regularly shaped and is of the same length. The fins are well developed and are about the same length or longer than the fish's head. Warts and growths on the body of fish can be due to carcinomas or viral growths. Therefore, it is better not to take them for your colony. This picture shows a condition that is infectious and appears to be either viral or bacterial in origin. It appears that the pathogen responsible causes normal cells to mutate and form the growths. You can consider about head to snout slope. From the side view, you can see the slope of the head. Some have acute slopes and some have gradual slopes. Most of the time, acute slope come with possible males and the gradual slope with possible females. All these tips are possibilities only. When you consider the head slope, keep in mind there may be head deformity called snub nose deformity. Only time will tell what causes this deformity, even though the fish can and will live a long life apparently not being bothered or affected by it in any way. More recently, it has been shown that breeding snubnoses can produce 100% normal offspring, indicating that snubnoses are caused by environmental factors and most of the time not associated with the fertility of the fish. But my request is not to select a fish with snubnose for your breeding colony. When we consider the morphology of this fish, some fish have a thicker black line than a white line and some fish have a thicker white line than black line. I personally prefer to keep the fish that have predominant white over the black. When you select fish according to the above details, most probably you will have a healthy male-female mixed colony of young zebra plecos. Keep in mind each colony should have different bloodlines for a healthy F1 generation. When you have a good amount of quality zebra pleco, your ultimate target should be to keep them healthy until they breed for you. 
Now, I'll let you know how to keep a sustainable, healthy aquarium setup in a zebra pleco tank. Now, we will talk about water chemistry. When we consider water chemistry, I will tell you that they are a very resistant species and will settle for almost anything within reasonable limits. Perhaps a pH of around 6.5 to 7 is ideal to maintain them. Although I know that some keep zebra groups at a higher pH that lives perfectly. When breeding, you will have to vary some values to be successful. The water temperature should be between 28 to 30 Celsius. At about 29 Celsius, they are doing quite well. If I had to give only one piece of advice regarding parameters, I would tell you that the most important thing for these fish is the stability of the aquarium setup. Try not to touch the aquarium constantly and do not make drastic changes to the tank. Let them be calm and enjoy watching them. You will see how they will use you and your setup. They are almost pure carnivorous, much more likely to feed on live foods like blood worms and baby brine shrimps. I am using Hikari carnivore pellets with other Hikari food variants, Dr. Baslier food variants, decapsulated brine shrimps, blood worms, Ebo foods, and many more varieties of foods. Never let the excess amount of food be left in the tank. It will cause ammonia spikes later and harm to the fish. Always use a small amount of food several times per day. It will be a safe method. Also, if they school with tetra varieties, they will eat the eggs laid by tetras. Try to keep some small shrimp colony with zebra pleco. They will eat the excess food that has not been eaten by the zebra. They will reach the places that are unable to be reached by zebra pleco and keep that place clean. With the presence of shrimps and tetras, zebra pleco reassures the safety of the surroundings in the tank. Now we are talking basic things about breeding this amazing pleco. When the comes to adult breeding age usual ratio is two females to one male, and with one to 1.5 inch diameter one side, open clay caves for an easy process of spawning. Here you can see I used four caves for them. Two caves are with one inch diameter openings and two caves have nearly 1.5 inch diameter openings. According to the body size, they will choose the best size cave for their spawning. The standard cave length is five to six inches. Also, you can use mixed length caves with some five inches and some six inches. This method will help you trigger the spawning process of zebra plecos. Raise the temperature to at least 29 Celsius and ensure the tank is well aerated and heavily filtered then making a big water change. Fill only 50% of the previous volume. If you do it coinciding with a rainy day in your area, much better. The most effective way to do this would be to empty 50% of the water and leave it low for a week. Then begin to fill the remaining 50% with very fine water so that it takes three or four hours to complete. In this way, it will imitate a rainy season. In addition to that, increase the strength of the current simply increasing the flow and increase the amount of natural live food will help to trigger the spawning process. Following that method with huge water changes, TDS value gets reduced in the aquarium, temperature will drop and the water flow will increase. These things naturally cause to trigger the spawning. Ensure there are many spawning caves and crevices available for the fish to select. During spawning, which takes place in several batches, the male blocks the cave entrance with his head. The female persuades the male away from guarding the cave entrance to lay the eggs. Once this is complete, the male will often have to push the female out of the cave before he can resume his parental guarding. It is quite common that the first spawn will be more of a trial run and the eggs will remain infertile, typically between seven to 15 eggs laid at a time. They take around seven days to hatch. After day 10, the yolk sac should be completely consumed and feeding begins. They immediately take dried food and frozen or live brine shrimp. They will take about 2.5 months to reach one in length. After this point, they should grow to 1.5 to two inches in six months and will breed again within two years if raised in an environment focused on them. High water quality and a near constant food supply. This is the whole story behind maintaining a healthy colony of Hypencystris zebra plecos until they breed for you. Take home message is to get a good knowledge about zebra pleco behavior and patience.
for at least three years until they breed for you. Most of the time in zebra pleco breeding, you should have some kind of luck. Thank you for joining Serendib Aquatics. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to comment below. I'll try to reply to all comments. You can share your knowledge with others about L46 Hypensatris Zebra Pleco by putting a comment too. Serendib Aquatics will see you in our next fish breeding video as soon as possible. Hang on with Serendib Aquatics. If you think this will help you with your aquarium journey, please be kind enough to subscribe Serendib Aquatic YouTube channel for new updates.